Can we rise up on our feet? Lord, we bless you. Give him praise. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our God. You are worthy. Can we just lift up our hands and say, Lord, we thank you. We bless you inside and outside. Lift up your hands as we worship. Lord, we give you praise. You have done great things. Great things in our midst. Thank him for the miracles. Thank him for the manifestation of his word. Thank him for salvation. Lord, we give you praise. We come with grateful hearts. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who have been here for a while you understand that we are a grateful people hallelujah we'll never forget his benefits hallelujah psalm 103 says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits who forgiveth our sins who healeth our diseases and delivereth us from destruction and so Every time we come before his presence, it's good to just worship him and to give him praise for life, for health, for his word, access to his word. Hallelujah. Said the entrance of thy word, give it light. Light, understanding, even unto the simple. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Thank you because tonight you will do great things in our midst. We have come for koinonia, a time of intimacy. We pray that you speak from the throne and cause that our ears hear the voice of our King in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just walk up to 20 people. Tell them it's good to see you again. Your presence gives me hope that we are coming. Come on, walk up to 20 people inside and outside don't be antisocial is part of koinonia That's all right. You can go back to your seat. I appreciate the Lord. The Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for the things that God is doing in our midst. Hallelujah. God is doing great and awesome things. We've been celebrating the wonder-working power of God in our midst. Hallelujah. And the transforming power of His Word. We thank Him for the opportunity to receive from Him again. Hallelujah. We've been taking a series on the kingdom. And um, 
Angels still speak. Hallelujah. Where people who believe in the realm of the spirit and the operation of spirit beings. The Bible says, Here I come to Mount Zion, and it lets us know we are not alone. Hallelujah. Three days ago, a friend of mine called me early in the morning and um, she said Josh I need to talk to you and I said okay what's, what's, what's wrong and she said I had a dream and I got a song from that dream and I want to share it with you I said really and she said it was a dream I was ministering somewhere and she was not even in the ground where the meeting was and she heard the song it was a powerful song from the spirit and she heard my voice i was singing it and um it was so powerful according to her description she said the place was so charged there were all kinds of miracles people repenting opening up their hearts to the lord and um, when she woke up she came with a song and i want to teach us the song very powerful it's our culture to receive heavenly songs and communicate them hallelujah because we are a family hallelujah so we're going to sing the song i like you to receive it in your spirit many of you just like new songs thank god for the next one no 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 no. you see god gives songs to announce seasons hallelujah jewish songs were used to announce seasons so when you heard a jew sing it will give you an understanding of the seasons that they were in if it was a passover they had songs if it was the day of atonement called yom kippur they had songs that they would sing and so i believe that this song came prophetically coinciding with the great things that god is doing in this season hallelujah very powerful song the song is a revelation of uh, matthew 21 the triumphant entry of jesus christ hallelujah just listen and let it bless your heart. Are you ready, people? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. There's a part that says Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Worship us, can you help me? Holy. Oh, holy. Just listen to the song and let it enter your spirit. On and did it, we didn't change it. Exactly as it came from the realm of the spirit. In the name of our God. Sing holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Can we try it now? The whole congregation, holy. Can you sing it? Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes 
sing the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, yeah. Let's let it see who come in the name. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, yeah. Let's let it see. Just help the worshippers sing holy. Just the worshippers. Help me worship us. Holy, holy, blessed is He. It was a triumphant entry. In the name of our God, and He rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song comes. The season God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant end, riding upon a horse, and that's why we are joining Him to sing Hosanna. We are saying Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is He who comes from the Lord. Blessed is He who comes in the name of God. One more time, Hosanna, Hosanna. Can we rise up on our feet to just sing it one more time? Holy, holy now. Come on, let's raise up our voices and sing. Holy, 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 holy. Let's let it see. a family of faith we understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit unedited to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. In one minute, just say, Lord, I receive. I connect my spirit with the revelation of this song. A triumphant entry into our destinies, into the new levels of grace, new levels of his spirit. Oh, let it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we hear your voice and we yield our spirits. Like Samuel before the ark, we declare, speak for we are listening. We have ears to hear that which you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. When you make God's ways your way, he will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. So that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. 
that it be done on earth as it is in the heavens until you understand the operation of the heavens you have no right to do anything on the earth and it's our job here at koinonia to listen habakkuk chapter 2 says i will stand upon the watch my watch and set myself upon the tower and i will see what the lord will say the bible says what i show you in the secret declare thou on the mountain top and it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the father to hear what he's communicating for every season god is preparing us training us fashioning us by his spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season and hear me friends if you found your way into this place i'd like you to know that god brought you by his spirit to build to equip to empower you he said rule thou in the midst of thy enemies it takes understanding he said he made many lights but he made two great lights one light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night if you don't have that light you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night there is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule and god is communicating these lights and these truths unto us and father we thank you it's a privilege and we respect it we don't just believe in you we respect you thank you father in the name of jesus god bless you please be seated we began a series last week on the kingdom hallelujah how many of us were blessed last week praise god we began to establish please take out your pen your writing materials it's a teaching so as much as possible whenever you're coming for a meeting like this come with your writing materials god is teaching and building us there's only so much your mind can at a time blessed be the name of the lord and so i began a teaching last week and i began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom how that the word kingdom comes from two words it means the domain of the king hallelujah how many of us still remember that and we began to explain how that in the system of god the kingdom of god is everywhere the influence and the, the authority the rulership the dominion of the king is exercised is permitted to find expression hallelujah and we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland how many of you remember that we began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom and that every time a colony is created it is created either by conquest you fight and gain access to that colony or you find a virgin land and occupy it hallelujah the a colony is is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom and i did tell us that in a kingdom system everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king hallelujah in a democracy we have people living for themselves for instance in america you can decide to walk up naked i can decide to walk naked tomorrow and when people say josh are you okay I say, what is your business we are in a democracy but in a kingdom system everyone lives for the king hallelujah if at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king you were termed a rebel hallelujah and i began to explain to us that we are not just believers we are not just born again christians but we are citizens of a kingdom hallelujah and that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance not just to our savior not just to our lord but to our king many know him as savior many know him as lord but few know him as king and daniel speaking said that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and isaiah reiterating said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end and God is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom because for many people Christianity is just a blind race a race out of hell to heaven and we stop there and there are many believers who are, are not partnering with the Holy Spirit and every time you see our posters when we write koinonia we write intimacy and partnership that we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him hallelujah praise the Lord 
then we began to explain how that man was given dominion adam was given a kingdom are you listening to me adam was not given a religion he was given a kingdom genesis 1 26 he said have dominion the word dominion is a language of royalty it says rule and adam lost and gave the keys to satan hallelujah and i did tell us that the entire bible can be summarized thus the king has a kingdom and out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth hallelujah and for a period of time man walked in the council of the kingdom he sent his governor the governor of the kingdom is the spirit of god I told us the concept of the governor that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values the culture the principles of the mother kingdom that's the primary assignment of the governor he's a representative of the king hallelujah and then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land and he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king and there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens every kingdom has systems has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people has a political system every kingdom has a system for rest and and all of these things we are going to be discussing it hallelujah there are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true christian on the earth for many of us we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell or get married and have children and grow old and then say i've contributed my quota to the planet there's more hallelujah say after me i am an ambassador a representative of the kingdom hallelujah and so from genesis chapter 3 until um matthew chapter 1 the coming of jesus he was the kingdom lost you can summarize everything the kingdom was lost hallelujah it was not god's original design for the nation of israel to have kings he desired their king it's out of their strong heart and they were stiff-necked people hallelujah and so he told samuel to go and anoint saul and then david and all the kings that followed it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of israel understood the concept of kingdom and then jesus showed up john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god hallelujah and when jesus stepped upon the planet he began to speak about the kingdom hallelujah started talking about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like unto this the kingdom of god is like unto this he began to liken the kingdom to many things and all through his work on earth he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom when he showed love it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he walked miracles, signs and wonders, it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom. And then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor. In chapter 15 and 16, he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus, the comforter, the standby, the advocate, the helper, the strengthener, the guide, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I did tell us that Jesus, for our sake, he came to restore the kingdom. Hear me. The primary purpose of Jesus was not to come and take us to heaven. Don't stone me yet. It's a teaching. Hallelujah. The primary purpose of Jesus was to restore the kingdom. To restore the kingdom. That's why Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says, We have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests, and we shall rule in this life, in this earth hallelujah and jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth 
is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lost in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter one says i am he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of matthew to john was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter one down onto jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that governed the holy spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the bible ends in the book of revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of revelation is a prophetic book that reveals christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to running to heaven we are not staying very long here we are coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts God is reorienting us so that we understand that Christianity is a kingdom system. It's not just a religion like many others. Are you listening to me? Many of us think, okay, it's just a religion and then one day, one day, something will happen, I will die. No, 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 no. And to equip us to be relevant. Revelations 11 verse 15, if you are there, say amen. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay I like the rendition in Amplified. The seven angels sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom, the systems of this world, the word world here is the Greek word cosmos, the social system of the world. He said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open hallelujah i'll be talking on kingdom advancement it's a continuation of the series kingdom advancement advancing the frontiers of the kingdom we stopped last week by helping us understand that jesus came to restore the kingdom say after me jesus christ came to restore the kingdom and he did restore the kingdom say one more time jesus christ came to restore the kingdom hallelujah 
and not just to restore the kingdom but to restore the citizens of that kingdom hallelujah that's why he died that's why he went through everything he went through jesus christ bled and he cried he wept was beaten by cruel and wicked people he went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us hallelujah and the next step when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored the next step is to receive the kingdom hallelujah say after me the next step is to receive the kingdom how do you receive the kingdom by embracing the king of that kingdom hallelujah that's what we call being born again hallelujah being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom so when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing we're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom hallelujah that's why you come up and say lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me and he said i declare that you are lord of my life hallelujah lord of my life you are the king i choose to submit to your governing authority thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom and every time you make that decision as a proof he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life it is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us but he can live in us hallelujah the holy spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom hallelujah hallelujah are you following me now very very important so you receive the kingdom you embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life because he that told by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in adam to the governing authority of satan hallelujah that's why the bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as a non-believer the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning are you following me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do and we say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you, you you get born again you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah 
brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom hallelujah he will first and foremost work on your mindset say after me mindset when he works upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. And is antagonistic to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. And the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything. He allows your will to come into play. So you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him. And it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is god's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise god and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the holy spirit and god designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor he said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further 
we get filled with the Holy Ghost then you fall under the anointing ba -ba 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 -ba. you just turn and then you get born again and then many people just stop there so what is it about praying in tongues and just moving and then they say just keep praying there's a real devil in this kingdom just keep praying and the person says okay so i'm praying in tongues and he's just praying ba -ba 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 -ba. what is the prayer to what end hallelujah to what end is our bible study to what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah i want you to understand that the king has an agenda say after me the king has an agenda and what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom as i announce this you check your life if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence he said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning are you following me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of God's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda Thank you Jesus this is the current agenda of the king that we partner with the governor of the king having been taught the values the culture the lifestyle and you see God does God cannot send you the king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message until he schools you are you listening to me you must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when god calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now god is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement 
So we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king. That's what we call soul winning. So soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership. Hallelujah. So for many denominations, what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom, but to have many members of our churches. So you see someone who is born again. He tells you we are in the same kingdom. He said, no way, no way. If you are not under my denomination, you don't belong to the kingdom. Interesting. That's the nonsense that is going all around. God is not teaching us denomination and dogma. He's teaching us kingdom. Are you following me now? That the most important thing all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms hallelujah when we understand this we'll stop discriminating ourselves because i wonder what we are going to do in heaven that big table in the last supper there's only one table the bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seatmate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one yoruba person one Igbo person and then one northern and quickly quickly three people let's do that quickly quickly yoruba Igbo. please come come up three of you no 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 hallelujah Aaron is from Kaduna state she's from the east and Ejimi is from the what west now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things I follow me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a Yoruba person, especially a, a well, it, it happens with everybody really, but especially the ladies, want to greet, what happens? They prostrate. It's their culture. Are you following me? So, you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from. Is that correct? When you hear them talking and they say, hey, share and all of that, you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And then for the Igbos, they have, I... We had a sumptuous meal. It reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of God that we had on Sunday in Pastor William's house. I appreciate them. You don't know what I appreciate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ate a very delicious soup called in Salah. See that? That's the benefit of kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise god and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport and you see someone just proceed ah are you a shake and then you just greet you know you just bow here and all of that i say are you a that's nice it connects you are you following me now please i'm trying to communicate a message i hope you understand what i'm saying so as citizens of the kingdom we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly are you listening to me when you see a yoruba person you know instantly when you see an Igbo person even if a yoruba person wears kaftan his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing very quickly you just know this is a yoruba person hallelujah are you following me now how come there are many christians and there are few kingdom citizens it tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have we have many believers across many churches and many christians but the world is still contending whether jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask i say who are you christian who are you christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me that's why we are taking this teaching
because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah they are dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were jews god bless you please sit down hallelujah so our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture now the word culture is not a demonic word i know that um in our nigerian and african context i know that there are many wrong things with many cultures all right there are very healthy sides of culture respect love for god but there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of god has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen If your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement so you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit Bible calls it love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. He said against this there is no law. And so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character. Suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a loved one and instead of you to be insulting god and talking you say lord i love you i love you now and they cannot understand i love you tomorrow i love you forever you just hear a bad report from the doctor and instead of panicking you say no there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness 
that surrounds me and this light that I see only comes alive every time I hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in Jesus Christ the moment Jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time I hear your voice number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience that's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom disobedience and rebellion hallelujah in the world system they hail you for disobeying hallelujah as guys when you disobey people disobey parents disobey authority they say man and you're like hey you just touch your head because it's a system are you following me now it's called cosmos let me tell you where it started from it started from a man in the bible called cain the bible says and cain departed from the presence of god he came out from under the governing authority of that king and the bible says cain built a city a type of a kingdom after the name of his son enoch and all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system and then nimrod in genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in luke chapter 4 when jesus came he began to speak and he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth he found where it was written in the book of isaiah isaiah 61 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed he has smeared me with the holy ghost and with power he has empowered me to do the following to preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed many of you who have gone on our facebook i'm sure you've you've seen the great testimony that we have the latest really that we have right now very powerful testimony hallelujah about two or three um fridays ago a woman not even a believer hallelujah came and she stood outside here had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and said what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now 
instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of god or to make a name for the ministry all this nonsense that people do that's why a true servant of god will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom are you seeing that so if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel and we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesuses for many people but every true servant of god is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them zeus and hammers the bible says paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people john speaking said that i may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of god any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get god's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 a says cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your bible cry yet saying thus saith the lord of hosts my cities through prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor that's nonsense are you listening to me hear me when you understand the agenda of the king you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor hallelujah for many of us our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg the bible calls such people rich fools the issue is not the rich the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade we've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them So it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things canality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you 
that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver and so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to bail because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do he say i don't know but sha don't bow and the man is saying i must pay the school fees of my children the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel and we say don't be corrupt don't loot they say okay teach me god's way we say forget it don't loot and when the man is under pressure he will sign that document when the lady is under pressure she will sign and say to hell with anything and then we keep looking and say the ladies are corrupt the young people are poor the bible says the poor the rich it didn't say the rich christ the rich will rule over the poor are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord <laughs> and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred Can I tell you something, friends? I have said it. People have termed it to be arrogance. I'm sorry if you think it's arrogance. Let me tell you something. The wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man. It's tied to the direct hand of God. That's why we preach the way we preach without apology. We bring the uncompromising word of truth because I tell you under God, we have not bowed to bear and we will not bow. There is a way you eat the king's food. And you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king but we are that remnant that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system that's why we are teaching what we are teaching so prosperity is very important number four it's a language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected is called influence I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweetheart, come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody. I mean clap and shout. Look at them wait hold on hold on hold on look at what is happening to her she's happy and enjoying it although she cannot understand this same character or this same attribute is inherent in every one of us including the religious people i've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him we all desire influence for parents when they call your child and the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating come on am i talking help me yeah. 
how much more the king that you represent the bible says the hour has come john 17 verse 1 it said now the hour has come he said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that's how god gets glory when the sons are glorified glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you are you listening to me to reveal his glory and his majesty is found in psalms 1 45 and the hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if michael jackson just lift his hand and say i get i'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church who are supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when Cecilia Ibru was having a Thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that Thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love God like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and I or Richard Jaffo preached his life out. He said, now that I have this caliber of people, let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them. Let me tell you something. There are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you. It's your influence. The Bible says, see yet thou a man diligent in his business. He said, he will not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. I was watching the Forbes, Forbes um, first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible says for god so love the world that you are hating hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages eight to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset, mindset. the world is a system that gives you a mindset are you following me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade 
but there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom number one sports sports is an area where the power of babel is being built hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of christ hallelujah sports number two in the area of arts music fashion this is an area that the church has neglected you just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning till night and those people who have paid their price they are competent so we say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized they are excellent and they directly promote satan but how about it ends? mediocrity is the most important thing the voice doesn't matter it's just a revelation i say who and the keyboardist for 10 minutes is trying to find the key punching and then he's smiling you don't provoke yourself the bible says by the truth that's what say you are called into fashion who do you know in fashion me, i don't know anybody oh okay one person versace these are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them those in the world the sports people the media people those at the forefront of music and fashion day and night they are building themselves they sign contracts with satan and they keep investing in themselves you ask them where are you going they keep innovating things because they live for the glory of satan but we have many believers who cross our legs and we think god will do everything and you say i know one day the top is my portion you really think so the top is your portion how we don't invest in ourselves we just come and mumble tongues for one hour and then we say my destiny and then you go to a place and they send you out they say no job for you and you are angry why will i give you a job when you are not competent why should i give you a job when you make my company lose are you get are you am i provoking somebody let me tell you whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the holy spirit will give you believe what i'm saying i pray in tongues but we are the nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword but with another hand we keep building so many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom 
many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom hallelujah and you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians and they will say hey it's happening Nigeria. It's happening. where the he wasn't enacted by angels he was enacted by human beings you can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances and they move people wherever they want hallelujah you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a a, a a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the wealth do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come I appreciate this beautiful lady <laughs> wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord don't get married don't give birth are you listening to me very important and that's one area satan is perverting the family life like never before people are losing priorities and they look at children and when they say bring this child to church they look and say ah, ah little children like this but these little children 
can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them the parents pass and see the children they say ah okay children say with their little thing then one day the child tells you mommy i've been the queen of the coast since three years the queen of the coast <laughs> queen of what i thought you were young hallelujah can i tell you something let me challenge parents here and prospective parents the word train up a child does not mean discuss with them it makes it means make them do it if i'm going to church my child is going to follow me no matter what the argument is we'll talk later <laughs> hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me birth bring me birth and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah bless this lady i love you god bless you sweetheart hallelujah there are many parents that for your children the first time they hear i love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it and then he comes and says hey, how are you i love you and although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear and then she says i hate you i hate you and then in the night she flashes him and then he flashes her back Then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1 flash again or hi then the guy calls yeah, i knew you would call and later on you find out why a nice church going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted because a family where there is no love a family where there is no togetherness a family where the parents are not humble to say i'm sorry when they need to say i'm sorry that kind of a family is not a true picture the first example of god should be seen in a father the first example of the holy spirit should be seen in a mother the first example of unity should be found in the couples hallelujah to train the children in the fear and the admonition of god i have a dream that after 20 years of marriage you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing no rat race no fighting up and down i'll forever be chasing after you that's what you hear us singing because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy we are adhering to it are you getting blessed i'm provoking something the last area media right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free it has already been paid satan paid people to prove that jesus is not lord he's still paying people hallelujah you just open any a nice christian site with a little clip five minutes they say pay fifty dollars then say i'm not ready and then somebody say come and see i had an encounter with satan it's free on youtube watch hallelujah are you getting blessed the media it's just right now that there's a media revolution God is raising media giants. For some of you, as I mention this area, something in your spirit says, are you hearing? Are you hearing? God is telling you, are you hearing? The moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you, sweetheart, you just say, pastor. Who told you it's pastor? Maybe it's media or fashion. Many of us just think ministry is about standing. And you envision where you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming they just bring water for you and say daddy sir if that is your concept of kingdom advancement there's need for real repentance tonight these areas are the areas that the church have left to the world and can I tell you something our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems that's why we are holding this teaching hallelujah but i know we are that generation that the next set of sports people i look forward to times when before they start playing 
while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and and scoring goals they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people and you tell them i speak under the authority of the lord whose i am and who i serve that statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and say this is my mentor i'll do anything he's doing and now that he has mentioned jesus what is it about jesus and they begin to search and god will lead them to a site and they will check jesus is lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there and then you read and know let me tell you if we depend on only our fifty thousand and five hundred thousand man crusade to get people born again in the next hundred years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the tv five minutes a woman like oprah winfrey stands on tv and declares to people that jesus is not lord and in five minutes i was checking her facebook and she has six million followers six million followers on facebook hallelujah coca-cola has 23 million and i check many churches 10 5 11 22 110 300 700 and then a few hundred thousand those are the mega ministries so can you see that christianity is not a call to laziness it's a call to service are you following me so after you get born again and you get filled with the holy ghost the holy ghost trains you and then he sends you and then he begins to call you he says oh no i'm releasing you to the it industry go and challenge the people steve jobs of blessed memory he has gone wherever he is hallelujah and all kinds of people and he says i'm sending you wherever there is darkness god sends you as the light and he says go as the light and he comes and says mr Yums, you draw and you do design i'm sending you to this industry he comes and says aaron you are an event planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department when he say, I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense don't stone me if for seven days in a week you are in church all the days of your life you will never affect the system because the mission field is not in the church the mission field is outside the church it says you are the light of the world not the church so we come and we are built we are equipped on monday you are at work in the bank and someone comes and while you are signing the check you see by the spirit and you say sir you've been having a challenge in your family and he looks and then you tell him i bring you the word of the lord i know that you're having a financial problem begin to tithe and be serious tithing is a principle of the kingdom and then you just turn his receipt and write your number or you write a number of a ministry he can go and say god bless you the king has found expression hallelujah and then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo kayaba. i'm not an ordinary person lord i'm an ambassador make way for me and then god makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the the daniel said while i slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government to say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah 
and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say it to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we're just thinking of how we chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say Shaba, kaba, rata, ba, 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 ba. I see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can i do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be joshua selman international ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven i've made up my mind that everywhere i go the kingdom will find expression Ejimi makes shirts. Look at the beautiful shirts by the media people. This is an artistry and the creativity of one. He is a minister, but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give God glory. Hallelujah. We believe in it. I'm being practical and I'm sharing this. Dio is going for a, a, a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country. Hallelujah. He's going for a training. He's the head of the media. But it's not just about praying in tongues. We realize that we have an agenda. We are going, we are invading the media. And so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks. Certified. Every one of these media people, you see them doing what they are doing, they were trained. Because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn. A, play, a church is the place of building. And any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer 
on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we are not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom think kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all you say lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you what all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and god would give him songs and then he will write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day god will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it i look forward to times when when we tune our radio we we'll just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for heal song. Bless God. I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of God. If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested, it's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there and we will pay in such a way that you you cannot reject us we are going to buy mtv we are going to buy channel o oh we will we will we'll change it to miracle tv <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing friends we may not look like it but let me tell you it's in you the bible says now are we the sons of god we are rising our parents like the eli generation have done their best and they are transferring the button to the samuels and we will carry it and represent the kingdom a time will come they will come and meet you and someone want to bribe you and you hold back his hand and not just say no i don't do it you say no 
I represent a kingdom. Don't just say I don't do it. Someone comes to meet you and says, Can you come to my hotel? I say, No, I don't do it. What you are just trying to say is that uh, uh, I don't do it with you. You must let the person know that I represent a kingdom and I'm bounded by a modus operandi. And part of it is that we are not engaged in this. I have a king and I pay an allegiance to him. Hallelujah. Ejimi does designs. When you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-God, he will not do it. Because you like him, you will change your mind. Ha. I look forward to a time when the world, although they don't like us, they cannot deny the impact we are bringing. That's the time. At that time, we will gather on Sundays and pray. And every time we are praying, although they do not understand what we are saying, they cannot deny the effect. It's telling on their salaries. It's telling on the economy. You come and meet someone working in your office. And like Joseph, the person is depressed. And he said, what happened? He said, I was just told I have cancer. And he said, come with me. As the manager of the company said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, cancer, go. And the person is healed. And he said, I thought it's only in church. And he says, to let you know that the kingdom of God is advancing. Hmm. Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Arise arise it's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down the call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility we are going to pray we are out of time we'll continue the next time i'll be revealing to us the structure of the kingdom i really want us to understand the concept of the kingdom now you see that is beyond just getting born again rise up on your feet Above all, above all, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, above all, above all, above all, above all, hey, hey. your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns. Responsibility to directly promote the government of heaven in your class, in your job. You have a responsibility of the increase of his government and his peace. There shall be no end. How much of the king are you representing? How much of his glory are you directly representing? Come on, pray. Pray. So God Pray. Your kingdom. Your kingdom. The influence of your kingdom. Your character. Your culture. Your lifestyle. Your way. In politics. 
government, in music, in the media. Family life, Christ must be exalted. Make sure you are praying. We are that generation. It's an apostolic generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Hear me. Hear me. You are going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, I receive grace to be competent. Hear me. Many of us right now, from this meeting, go and buy books. Go and buy DVDs that address the area you know God has called you. Sit down and walk. There's room for laziness. Generals are not lazy people. Lift up your voice and pray. I will be competent in the media. I will be competent in politics. Go ahead and pray. It's an apostolic reformation. And also for nominal Christianity. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. No matter what it costs me. Come on, pray. I pay the price to be competent. To be competent. He pays the influence of the kingdom. Inside and outside. Make sure you are praying. That's why you came for Koinonia tonight. To be equipped. To be empowered. Come on, pray. And say, Lord, you are sending me to the media. I will be competent. You are sending me to politics and government. I will be competent. You are sending me to the family ministry. I will be competent. You are sending me to fashion and style. Make sure you are praying. Whether you are a caterer, whether you are an event planner, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a banker, whether you are a politician, we all have the same mandate, the same responsibility. Whether you are a teacher, whether you are a student, advance his kingdom, advance his kingdom, advance his government. His kingdom, his influence, is an everlasting kingdom. Make sure you are praying. In ministry, I receive grace to be competent. In business, I receive grace to be competent. In every area you have called me, I receive grace to be competent for the sake of His majesty, for the sake of the kingdom. Hey, Papa! My generation will hear my voice. My confidence will give me a voice. And I will shout it. With everything, we will shout for your glory. With your catering, with your banking, as a lecturer, as a computer mogul, as a business mogul, as an investment tycoon, as a pastor, with everything, we have one agenda, advance the course of his kingdom. Make sure you are singing this song as a prophetic revelation. Competence in banking, competence in catering, competence in event planning. As an architect, you are competent. As an engineer, you are competent. As a designer, you are competent. Come on, try. We will shout. We will shout. We will shout. The nation will know that Jesus is Lord. The nation will know that Jesus is King. That he is alive. The nation will know that he rules above all. The nation will know that our God is alive.
I said, Lord, whatever you give me that I will not glorify you with, let it not come. What he means, a keyboardist, he pays the price morning till night, building himself. No matter how much you will give me, I will not compromise. No, no matter how much you bribe me, I love my king. I am addicted to the king. There's no going back. It's beyond church. 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 It's an apostolic transformation. It's an apostolic revolution. friends this is what Jesus died for this is what Jesus died for we not just win souls but we advance their kingdom so when you get people born again don't leave them there that's why God prepares koinonia as a platform to equip people changing our minds there's no room for disobedience. There's no room for rebellion. We may be young people, but we are not lawless. We have a king above us. And we are going somewhere that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. That the media of this world will become the media of our God. That the politics of this world will become the politics of our God. Hear me? And that's why you came here tonight and for as many who are connecting on the internet and many others who will hear this tape and this the dvds there is a clarion call it's beyond church it's beyond eni it's beyond koinonia it's a, an apostolic reformation god is bringing upon the nations lord we give you praise we're out of time you're worshiping with us for the first time I'd like you to leave your seat and quickly come. Please, we're out of time. Let's hurry up. In this atmosphere, leave your seat inside and outside. Appreciate them. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Inside and outside. Young and old. If this is your first time, appreciate them. Come on, give them a big koinonia. God bless you. Clap for them like kingdom citizens. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the king. You see one of our there fathers and our mother. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They are coming. Keep singing. They are coming. Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you very much for coming. Daddy, we especially want to thank you, sir. Mommy, we want to thank you. Thank you. We'll let God do what he has to do. Hallelujah. Those of you outside, can you give God a shout of praise? I want you to intimidate those inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No other name like the name of Jesus. That's the name. There's no other name like the name of the Lord. No other name like the name of Jesus is worthy of glory is worthy of honor 
He's worthy of power and praise. Sing this, no other name. No other name like the name of Jesus. No other name. No other name. Are you there? Acts chapter 3. A great general of God before, before he left to be with the Lord. The man we know as Oral Roberts. At one time he was the greatest healing evangelist in the entire United States. He walked in such magnificent levels of power and healing. And when asked what's the greatest healing the greatest secret to experience the healing and the miracle working power of God in a meeting miracle crusade or whatever kind of meeting I thought he was going to say greater anointing or great worship or good ushers good sound system but or Robert said something that caught my attention. It didn't make sense. But when a man has walked in a realm, listen to him. Hallelujah. Because you see, in their days, they didn't just minister to the crowds. He laid hands on thousands of people one by one. Hallelujah. They could lay hands on about five to 35,000 people from morning till night. He saw all kinds of miracles. Or a Robert was a man of faith. He had faith like a lion. Hallelujah. And shortly before he went to be with the Lord, he left the secret here upon the earth. And then he left to join the cloud of witnesses that are watching us today. And I want to share with you very briefly what a father of faith, a general indeed. These are men that the heavens will salute them as they are coming. You don't cry for their death. They are the kind of people that you don't mourn their death. It's a thanksgiving. A promotion of a general. And Oral Roberts said, Miracles happen in response to only one word. Expectation. Expectation. Acts chapter 3. Lord Jesus power of God is so strong in this place tonight now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour that will be 3 p.m. our time he said and a certain man didn't tell us what his name was he said a certain man lame from birth was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful Many men have commented in this scripture and said, an ugly situation sitting at a beautiful gate. Hallelujah. To ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Verse 3. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an arms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us then verse 5 let's read it together one to read he said and he gave heed to them what expecting to receive something although he was lame hallelujah and they kept him at the gates because in jewish days those people who were unclean by any standard could not associate themselves with the normal people but that man sat down there and although he could not move he didn't have a voice but the Bible records that he had an expectation hallelujah 
and he voiced out his expectation every time people asked past him because he called on them and he said give me arms the bible says he expected to receive something and our father or our robot told us that this is one of the biggest secrets in the atmosphere where the miracle working power of god finds expression expectation hallelujah it's amazing how that believers come into the presence of god and we have no expectation hallelujah every time you come into god's presence you must have a well-defined well thought about expectation don't just come and say lord i know you will do what you will do no no because you see the realm of the spirit the anointing of god responds to your expectation your expectation is like a magnet in the realm of the spirit listen to me your expectation is the breeding ground for miracles you will never get a miracle if you don't expect one and even when you do you will not sustain it because you will not appreciate it an expectation will create hunger in you the woman with the issue of blood had an expectation and she said to herself if i may but touch the helm of his garment i shall be made whole although it was violating the levitical law as far as it governed holiness and cleanliness at that time but she said i will risk everything i have an expectation i know that if i can only touch the helm of his garment hallelujah blind Bartimaeus, when jesus was passing and that would be the last time he would pass that street blind Bartimaeus, although he was blind when he heard that jesus was passing the bible says he cried he said thou son of david have mercy on me and the religious people were kicking him away and they said don't the bible says he shouted them all there's something about expectation it it creates an atmosphere of faith your expectation is the heartbeat of faith hallelujah that i expect to receive and so you pray you plan you are not distracted when you come with an expectation you are not distracted you say lord there is an anointing tonight that will come upon my life and cause me to rise and rule in the midst of my enemies and your expectation prepares your spirit so that as the holy ghost is moving and blessing people your heart is open the bible says he expected to receive something from them and indeed he received hallelujah tonight many of us have come inside and outside some have come with prayer requests some of you have fasted and prayed preparing for this meeting say lord you will change my story and that of my family listen if god cannot help you then our gathering is useless our confidence is in the fact that god is able hallelujah able he is almighty all powerful every time god wants to release miracles into your life he begins to magnify himself suddenly you begin to see how mighty and the bible says they limited him in the wilderness by saying can god make a way for them and he supplied manna suddenly the holy spirit begins to remind you of the things that god has done that's why testimonies are important because it reminds you of the faithfulness of jesus moses instructed the people he said as your children grow make sure they don't lose touch of what god is doing and his miraculous act take out time to teach them let the children know every time they built altars they said when the children ask let them know that it was on account of the hand of god god is still doing miracles god is a miracle walking god are you listening to me you must convince yourself tonight tonight is not the time when you begin to question and say how can cancer disappear you see when i hear people ask these questions it's because they do not stay in god's presence when you stay in god's presence you begin to acclimatize to his realities hallelujah how in the world can you explain a genotype changing from ss to aa how in the world can you explain hiv going living a man one moment you are hiv positive one moment you are healed one moment you have cancer one moment you are on a wheelchair 
another moment you are up one moment someone is dead another moment he's back to life listen i need you to understand that the secret of miracles is to realize that god is a creator say after me a creator you see unbelief the the environment that we live in has brought so much unbelief in us hallelujah when a lady begins to feel a lump grow in her nobody questions and says where did the molecules gather themselves and begin to crystallize together hallelujah and then to begin to grow and become a tumor but when we say it's disappearing people ask all kinds of questions and say where did it go to how did it come where did it come in the first place someone who was born and can hear suddenly becomes deaf and then they say this and this went bad and then we do not ask ourselves how did the deterioration start but when god is reversing the process we begin to question and say are these deaf people are they really hearing are the blind people really see when you understand that god is a creator say after me god is a creator and the creative nature of god is such that the only raw material that is needed is the word of god listen all that you see is not all that there is that's going to, I'm, I'm giving you a revelation that will make you accept the miracle working power of god all that you see is not all that there is i hope you realize that there are insects in this place there are microorganisms in this place can you see them but you will know when you drop something here it will ferment after days is that correct the fact that your optical eyes cannot see the entire span of the universe and the things that god has created does not mean they are not in existence are you listening to me he was in a valley full of dry bones ezekiel 37 and he said son of man these bones are very dry one one bone is down there miles away kilometers away buried in, in the depth of the earth and he said son of man i want to show you something about the creative power of god's word i am about to speak and if you repeat after me every bone still knows his identity and it can connect back he said and as i spoke suddenly there was a sound the same sound in acts chapter 2 verse 1 down to 4 and 5 and 6 hallelujah the same sound is the sound of the creative power of god there are body parts in heaven all kinds of body parts listen god didn't stop creation the bible says for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure they are and were created they were created and are being created god is still creating things how did he create you in the first place how can a little seed come from a man and begin to grow until it becomes a full-grown baby we don't ask that question there is more to our realm than what our eyes can see we call certain cells unicellular how can a unicellular organism a fungi whatever it is enter your body whether through air or water and know exactly where your heart is as complex as you are you call it a unicellular organism and it has so much intelligence to go right to your heart and cause a heart condition hallelujah it will see your bones it will jump it will go everywhere and look for certain particular parts who told the unicellular organism that this is your brain why didn't it come here hallelujah that's the ex exact same where the power of god is the power of God is like a drug. When it is released, it goes into your body and begins to search. Every part that does not line up, suddenly it moves. If there's nothing wrong with your head, it will move. If there's nothing wrong with your hands, it will go. See, we direct the power of God by the words that we speak. That's why when we say Kalsa, suddenly by the Spirit of God, the anointing of God is moving. That's why not everybody is affected when you mention certain cases. The atmosphere of his presence you need to realize that the power of creation 
is what brings about miracles said so let there be and there was let there be and there was let there be and there was hallelujah a man called william branham he walked in such dangerous realms of the prophetic that he would sit down in the bush and he would watch squirrels be created and just run into the bush that answers that question is it the egg that came first or the chicken it really doesn't matter any of them can still come hallelujah the, a man called elisha the children laughed at him and said he was a bald-headed man the bible says suddenly he called a beer where did the beer come out from just came out consumed them and went back jesus christ after the people searched for fish all through the night they couldn't catch any he told them he said cast your net at the right side the power of creation brought those fish you really think it's scientists that are preserving the resources in the earth there is creation going on that's the same way they can say ah you have no you have a missing body part and the creative word of god see the secret of miracles is the word becoming flesh see the bible says the word became flesh and did what dwelt so the word of god can become flesh are you following me now when it becomes flesh so the word of god can become a new heart the word of god can become anything you want it to be the word became flesh when it becomes flesh that's what you call a miracle the word becoming flesh manifesting in your midst hallelujah that's the first revelation the power of creation is the power of miracles number two everything in the earth animate and inanimate has the ability to hear this is a revelation that if you do not have the prophets were mad people they would turn to the earth and say oh earth hear ye the word of the lord were they stupid people how can a man speak to the ground oh earth hear ye the word of the lord joshua commanded the son and he said son hear me stand still you need to realize that there is more than science has taught you everything in the earth mr niger you call it use it and do very well in school but let me tell you when it comes to reigning in life you must realize that there are very good common characteristics between living things and non-living things one of it is that they all can hear they all have the ability to hear hallelujah they all have the ability to hear that's the reason why the native doctors in your village can sit down and come out and speak to the air i i, I schooled in a very demonic place and uh, they had a supernatural ability to hold rain rain will not fall on their market days you will see heavy cloud by every geographical prediction it would have been rain you see the people moving happily carrying more goods to the market nobody is there's no emergency no stress no rain because certain ancient people understood this and then later in the night at about 2 a.m with no um no sign you suddenly see rain heavy rain that was the rain that would have fallen in the afternoon everything has the ability to hear the word of the lord number three what we call sickness please look up what we call sickness and diseases whether cancer ear problem all of these things i need you to know that there are demonic spirits and strongholds behind them are you listening to me you can give it any medical condition but i hope you realize 
whether it is through your carelessness or through whatever and so the secret of miracles really is the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ dislodging the power of Satan and then the anointing that comes with the Word of God bringing a recreation I follow me now the Bible tells us in the book of Luke I think Luke 12 about the woman who was bent over for 18 years hallelujah when Jesus saw her he said woman thou art loosed Look, who bounded her because we just knew that she stooped down but Jesus saw in the realm of the spirit that this woman had been bound bound by what the power of Satan and he said woman you are loosed from your infirmity do you realize that the Bible says the woman was still bent over but she had been loosed then what happened he laid hands on her and brought her up hallelujah and so the purpose of the name of Jesus is because that's the name the Bible says at the mention of that name every knee shall bow of things in heaven of things in the earth and of things under the earth so the purpose of the name of Jesus every time you come into a healing meeting you see we emphasize the name of Jesus because that's the name that's the name that all authority and all power every authority you can imagine in the universe and in the heavens has been vested in that name Jesus so when we mention that name all the demons and the principalities and the powers and even nature and all the biological components of your body realize that that is the authority creation and then as the anointing of God goes in answer to the name of Jesus to the power of his spoken word creation begins to happen and suddenly someone who is deaf in his ears suddenly finds out I can hear why because you see the purpose of the anointing is to make earth look like heaven are you following me now the anointing is God's energy is his ability to do work and so every time the anointing of God is released it's released in response to the word of God and it's supposed to bring your life to conformity with the atmosphere of heaven so when we worship and we begin to release the word of God what happens everything that does not represent the atmosphere of heaven begins to leave and demons begin to leave and imperfections begin to adjust themselves so what is your role tonight expectation the creative one is in our midst his word is strong in our midst. The Bible says that a shout of a king is in the midst of them. And God is ready to do great and awesome things. But you see, if you just come and you want to watch miracles and things happen and say, wow, another powerful meeting. You, you shouldn't be a spectator tonight. You must come and say, Lord, you are a creator. Even if it is over your finances. It took God seven days to create the heavens and the earth. I don't know how long. Calculate it mathematically. How long will it take him to change your story? Hallelujah. I know it doesn't change. A whole land called Samaria. Their economy changed overnight. Overnight. See, the word of God is powerful. When the word of God is spoken, it knows no limits. hallelujah so you send a word to your father who has been bounded and is just moving in the village and the word of God takes a hold of him suddenly things begin to change you must believe in the power of God's word hallelujah you must have expectation I'm telling you your own role tonight number one is expectation have a high expectation don't limit God the Bible says, the prophet told her, go and borrow vessels. He said, borrow, not a few. Borrow vessels. Borrow vessels. And the Bible says, when there was no more vessel, the oil kept flowing. And so tonight, enlarge your capacity. Have great expectations. That's why we ask everyone to come with your request. If you're here and you've not written your prayer request, get something. It's not just a ritual. It's not just a ritual, friends. We have received testimonies in this place and I'm glad that these testimonies have happened in the, among people that you can, you know 
and you can relate with. Expectation. Number two, you must take steps of obedience. Say steps of obedience. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why people do not receive. In our text, Acts chapter 3, listen, the Bible says something. Let's read verse 6. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. I, I, I used, I, I did an illustration with this and let me do it again. Mike, can you come or Ruben, come with your chair and let's do an illustration. I am Peter. The only difference is that I'm wearing a suit. Hallelujah. Okay, so this is Peter. Please sit down. Watch this. This was the man at the gate, beautiful, lame from birth. Are you following me now? Now, Peter comes to him and says, Silver and gold have I known. He said, But such as I have, give I unto thee. Listen, he said, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Guess what happened? The man was still sitting there. I'll show you in a moment. The man didn't get up, he didn't walk. He looked as though he didn't receive a miracle. He had expectation, but he didn't have the second point. Steps of obedience. And let's, let's read what happened. Verse 7. Are you ready? One to read. And then Peter took him by the right hand. That means he was still seated. And Peter said, Mr. Man, it doesn't work that way. Give me your hand. Watch this. This sign shall follow. Not go before. Follow. As you take steps of obedience, the signs follow. What does it mean to follow? Lead the way with your step of faith. God is committed to a performance. These signs shall follow. Hallelujah. And so when, if, if you are deaf in one ear, and they say, or two ears, and they say, lay your hands, your participation is part of the progress, the, the process that brings your miracle. Hallelujah. And they say, be healed check yourself just go ahead and check yourself many people just sit down like like one of the ministers was sharing steps of obedience hallelujah you receive your miracle by faith you declare it the bible says that 10 lepers met jesus and they beckoned on him to heal them he said go and show yourself to the priest the bible says as they went as they went suddenly they found out that they were healed these signs shall follow. And so, Peter reached out. And the Bible says, as he took him up suddenly, he now committed the power of God to work. Listen to me. Listen. One of the reasons why many people do not receive miracles is they are not taught how to receive one. Are you listening to me? It's not just when you are called out, maybe by word of knowledge and all of this. No. No. Whether or not your case is mentioned, once that atmosphere is there, the atmosphere where the manifested presence of God is, with his healing power, you open up your spirit and you receive. And you say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive. Thank you, Jesus. Suddenly, you begin to do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't walk well, suddenly you begin to walk. Don't say, can I leave the first leg? You take the step. And you will receive a rude shock. Suddenly you will find out that the energy and the ability of God comes in. As simple as this is, this has brought tremendous miracles. Let me tell you, I'll share one testimony. One of the most profound miracles that I've seen in my life is the miracle of a dear gentleman. His brother was in this school, I'm sure he has graduated maybe you did two or so years ago this guy was in these are verified stories you can find out even from shika hallelujah and he was working in a, i think the war college or army something naval school or something like that and then he had an accident now i don't know what they call it a kind of fracture where this bone is damaged badly i follow me now and this guy was in a situation they wrapped his neck you know with all of this uh, pop that they put and it was a dangerous situation they had to they told the parents they would need to bring specialists and 
the neurosurgeons who would come the chances of his survival if at all is very 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 faint hallelujah and then i didn't know much about the healing power of god and the miraculous so i, I was i think around chapel in the night they told me about him a lady called rebecca rebecca lamai she graduated remember her hallelujah and so she told me about the situation i said god will heal that guy and you know there are some miracles that when you say god will do it the recipients, the recipients say amen meaning oh god do what only you can do i don't want to know anything about just do it and i shared this to the glory of god i called him night call hallelujah and the guy was in pains he was shouting i said gentlemen i didn't call to sympathize with you i called to tell you you will be healed right now the guy was shocked i mean what kind of faith is this i told him i said all right so talk to god about your miracle and then i'll call you back in five minutes i was strolling he was on phone hallelujah and i called him let me confess i don't know if i was expecting the miracle to happen i'm not sure well i i now i know i wasn't sure then but then i think I, I, I was i thought i was sure hallelujah i was just trying to pray you know experiment everything and learn lessons from it after all i didn't collect money from him i had nothing to lose so when you collect money you are committed to back up what you have done hallelujah and now i just believed in the power of god and before i called him back i said lord do this miracle you are faithful and you are able to do it i didn't feel anything no goosebumps no anointing no prophetic word hitting me and god said now son today you step into the miracle me uh, no nothing i didn't feel anything in fact i was hungry that morning hallelujah and i called him and when i called him it was obvious he didn't believe he just wanted me to do this thing and and get out and i said in the name of the lord jesus and suddenly I felt in my spirit God was saying don't say be healed describe what you want to happen and I said in the name of Jesus I command new vertebral column completely from his neck down watch this as soon as I did that I told the guy I said remove your bracelet you know that's risky isn't it you don't want a family to travel all the way and come and meet a young man and say you are the idiot that is causing this thing to our family do you know how much money we have spent if you have not stood before the burning bush don't go before pharaoh you will die for nothing you will die for nothing are you listening to me and then i told him remove your bracelet and uh, that that thing he was putting suddenly this guy removed it god is my witness you remember i shared the story this guy began to shout he said jesus he touched his neck and that was a real miracle that's the kind of miracle you want to document when we are 30 years in ministry that's the kind of miracle I will, that well it may not look like a big deal now because of the great revelations of god it was a big deal for me then seeing the word of god come to pass this guy held the phone and ran to his mother's room i was still hearing he tapped her he said mommy i'm healed the woman shouted i had it jesus she had never seen that kind of miracle and they got up i was so happy i said lord this anointing is working ah no i won't lie to you i celebrated that miracle hallelujah the next day they called the father the father was shocked he said this is not true they said who they said one brother from zaria prayed in the morning and the father came when the father saw the son he began to weep are you following me now they they told the brother from congo the brother could not believe he said he must trace that person and come and look for him the next day you know how burial is that's how people gathered all the friends came to the house they took the x-ray from shika and immediately the day they took it the doctors and the nurses called me from shika so many people sorry my son i have small cancer i have small this <laughs> hallelujah i wonder who you are celebrating but i hope it's not me hallelujah are you listening to me 
I was shocked. And then I saw how the effect of one real miracle, one real miracle, not fake miracles, not stage managed miracle. Say this eye is not working. Are you seeing? No, no, I'm not talking of stage managed. Real manifestation of the power of God. And when I saw the x-ray before and after, truly, I knew that that song that says God is a miracle worker, I truly knew that God is a miracle worker. I'll never forget when we went for our crusade. We're trying to trust God. Everybody was putting the word of God. We we're soon going to pray. I want to stir up your faith. And you see, then, he and I was not big like this. I think this was about maybe one, two, three, the first three rows. All of us, men of faith. I encouraged them. Ejimi was almost giving up. He said, the way these villages were not ready to go and die for, any, for nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. The mother will say, I took my child from Ogun State to come and die in the north. <laughs> and when we got there, when it was time to pray for the sick, you know crusades in the villages is women that come and they are elderly women. They are not young people that you can call them and say, please, 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 just say it happened. No, elderly women. If they are not healed, you are saying, are they healed? I'm not healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we, I remember when we came, I remember a Jimmy went to a woman and he laid hands on her, shaking and just trusting, oh God, don't disgrace me here. And when he asked the woman, he said, are you healed? The woman said, yes, he thought he was playing the power of God and from that time till today until forever God has been faithful bringing miracles upon miracles to the glory of his name what's the purpose of miracles to point Jesus to point people to reveal the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ if it is true that he's a loving God then miracles prove that he is, does not want your life to be the way it is. Now, miracles are not just about healing, finances, your life, delays, marriages, all of these kinds of challenges. And tonight, I don't know what expectation you came here with tonight, but I know my God, my God, the one I serve, is not just the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has become my God. I was diagnosed of fungal infection. There was nothing the doctors did in my life. They did their best. I took every kind of antibiotic you can talk about. I was tired of injection. This head was literally rotting. They told me I would never be able to have hair on my head again. I said, oh God, this is not my negotiation with you. And today I'm a testimony of the miracle working power of God. I was diagnosed to have an eye condition. Hallelujah. And it was so bad. And one time, I was watching Benny Hinn. And then while he was ministering to the sick, I got down on my knees. I had expectation. I said, Lord, before I finished speaking, he said, there is a young man in Africa. You're on your knees right now. You have eye condition. Suddenly, light. I'm not just giving you stories. Light came from the television just hit my eyes that was it i know god is alive many of you are too innocent you have not had cause to need a miracle you see for people who say i don't believe in miracles i have only one answer for them the day you need one you will believe in it the day you truly need one and the doctors tell you i'm sorry remember the gentleman who was healed yes sadiq ibrahim how many of you remember him that terrorist guy he came and he had about two weeks to leave he was seated outside right here he's on video you can get it from the media department came hiv tuberculosis demons all kinds of things curses from wherever this gentleman got healed totally with his medical verifications the doctors could not believe it born again filled with the holy spirit 
And tonight, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Father, I thank you because you are in the midst of your people. I thank you because you have given us the word. Thank you because you have equipped us with the anointing. Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no other name. I bow before you, my Father. You are the great one. Let the people know I am not the healer, oh God. I pray, let the people know that I have no power in myself. Not any of the ministers in ourselves. We are not ashamed to declare that the purpose of the miracles you will perform tonight is for Jesus to be Lord. And we declare that we love you. That souls will be saved tonight. Lord, I worship you. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for cancers that will die. Thank you for restorations. Thank you because you will give everyone a testimony. Oh, I give you praise. My Father, Abba Father, thank you for all the things that you will do in our midst. Your wonder-working power. Lord, let no one leave this place without being healed and blessed. Spirit of the living God, you walked with our fathers of old and you wrought wonders through the hands of the ancient. And now in this day and in this time, I pray that you breathe upon us once again. Breathe upon us, O oh God. And let us taste of the breath of heaven. Forever you will be the lamb upon the throne. Oh, I worship you for the privilege of serving you. I gladly bow my knees to worship you. Come on, bless his name forever your majesty i bow before your majesty jesus the king of kings the lord of lords the miracle worker is strong in this place his healing power the lamb Jesus in the midst of his people 
strong and mighty bringing deliverance and in captivity for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he might destroy liquidate and he lays the works of darkness hallelujah 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 i need you to know that god is going to begin to move strongly healing delivering and causing people to walk in glory I sense the love and the power of God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. Inside and outside. God is already healing. I sense the power of God. I believe I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Let your faith rise. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Lord, I, Lord, I believe, 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 Lord, I Lord, I believe, Now, listen to me. Hallelujah. It's just hallelujah listen to me now there are people here who have been oppressed of satan hear me inside and outside the power of god is here to deliver i don't know why god always starts on this note hallelujah but in a moment the power of god will sweep across this entire congregation inside and outside and all those under the yoke of bondage now is the time i proclaim the time of liberty the time of liberty the time of liberty lift your hands everybody the time of liberty the time of liberty in the name of jesus every demonic oppression go 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 inside and outside now by the power of the holy ghost go be delivered inside and outside let the fire of god fall every demon possession leave god's people now in the name of jesus i see the fire of god i see rings of fire 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 bring them out bring them out be free! Be free! Be free! Be free! Be free! Right now! Outside! Be free! Outside! Be free! Hallelujah! My God! I see the angels of God holding something like a scissors. That's what I see. As the power of God falls, I like you to bring them out. None of you will escape in this row. I see a number of you now. Let the power of God fall upon you, Satan. Your reign ends in their life in the name of Jesus. Let's have them all out here outside. Outside, 
outside in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God soar, burning everything that is not done. Hallelujah. 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 This lady has been tormented. That devil now I command you come out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of them. Come out of them. Bring this lady for me. Bring this lady for me. Bring this lady for me. How wicked spirit. Come out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out of her. I see a snake rolling over this girl. This one lying down. That devil. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Holy Easter. The whole art scene, the whole art scene. Tonight, Satan has no reign over your life. Listen, those of you outside, those of you outside, I like all of you to shout Jesus. Listen, hold on. Hold on. God is not done yet, especially for those outside. Are you ready, those of you outside? The power of God will fall. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Oh, be set free. Those outside, the power of God is falling, setting men free. Hallelujah. Please bring this lady. Bring all of them outside. That's what I see. Bondage. Therefore, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I set you free now. Now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Be set free, be set free, 
now by the power of God. She's giving herself over to look. Yeah, the demons try to speak. Please bring her. Bring her. Oh, yes, she will be great. Satan be silent there's no time for discussion now in the name that is above all names if God be God leave her just let her go let her go don't hold her again for that demon leaves you forever just let her lie down is gone. Be sure of that. The lady is free. Her family has been tormented. Listen. Many of you didn't listen to what her family has been tormented. That's what I see. There has been all kinds of setbacks and challenges. Her family has suffered so much. And God brought her on behalf of her family. And we proclaim liberty forever. Indeed, you, your family will know you attended a miracle service. Please call this lady, this one, bring her. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. I command you to look at me by the power that is in the name of Jesus look at me it's not a suggestion Satan go let her go leave her alone just let her be Satan go out of her right now bring this lady Come. for the Lord will set you free and use you as a weapon of glory for your family the cares of this life you must lay them aside to love only him who is worthy for he that breaks the hedge the serpent will strike in the name of Jesus we set you free be free in the name of Jesus Deborah 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 who is Deborah and then I'm hearing another name is it Ndahi There's something sounds like Ndahi or something Andy something. Who is that? That's your name? Okay, you're Deborah. I'm hearing a name like Ndahi. Is it Ndahi or there's NDA something? Who is that person? Hallelujah. Please listen attentively because God is bringing words to help you. The Lord still calls that name for me again. Ndahi. Is it Ndahi or Nda something? Who is that? Is it any of you? What's your name? Deborah. Deborah. Ndahi. Hallelujah. The Lord says he's bringing a miracle to Ndahi or something. Hallelujah. And then you wake up every, listen, you wake up every morning and um, the right side the right side you've had an issue with it for a very long time in fact you're afraid of going to the hospital just the right side from your heart down severe pains 
it happens especially when you wake up in the morning who is that you're the one come hallelujah please lay your hands i'll pray for you just lay your hands there in the name of jesus be healed now be healed now by the power of the holy spirit I command that pain to go now in the name of Jesus please check yourself where are the Deborahs please hold your hands together come Deborah Southern Kaduna who is from Southern Kaduna here you are the one from Southern Kaduna where is your father your father is at home where does he live in Zaria. He lives in Zaria. Yeah. Tell your father, are you listening to me? Yes. That the Lord is restoring his years of tears. This is what God says I should tell you. Are you listening to me? You came with an expectation even for your father. Is that correct? Yes. I want you to know that God has answered your prayer. This for you is a new is a miracle service. Hallelujah. Um you or one of your relatives here has been writing jam. I see someone walking into a post you and me. One of your relatives or you. You? You have been writing jam. Why were you afraid of lifting your hands? God wants to set you free. Did you buy jam form? You bought this jam form. This is the last one you are going to write. The very last one the very last one you're going to write your elder brother does business who is that i mean among these people i see one your elder brother does business deborah elder brother does business hallelujah i hope he's not sitting in the crowd because god wants to bring a word for that person he will have what looks like a temporary setback but it will open him up to an opportunity he never imagined. This is to bring comfort for him at that time. I pray for all of you right now in the name of Jesus that God will I'm seeing a leopard running. That's what I'm seeing. An animal, a leopard running and God is saying I should prophesy speed upon your lives. I command and I decree it in the name of Jesus you will run you will run and you will do great things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. There is an elderly woman outside. Mama, there is an elderly woman that came outside. I don't know if it's that your daughter brought you. Please, I know there may be different. Um, you are wearing, you are, she has her tie like a wrapper, a wrapper, uh, her tie. Please, is there a woman like that, Mama? An elderly woman outside. Hallelujah. Please let's hurry up so we can save time. I see an elderly woman outside. She came with someone. You, you, you're tying uh, like. Hallelujah. Your son name is Stevens. 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 Who is that? Your son name is Stevens. Hallelujah. Who is that? Your son name is Stevens. Please, as we bring these words, just hurry up so that we we'll save time. You are the one. Your son name is Stevens. What's your dad doing? He's, he's a principal. He's a principal. Yes, sir. Of which school? Um, uh, a private school. It's owned by Airport. It's owned by Airport. Yes, sir. Is he planning to leave? Well, uh, there was a time he came back and he was complaining that the administration, the school administration, they are not really doing what. 
shortly your father is going to leave God is going to give him a greater responsibility go and tell him that's why I'm telling you you understand and Lord we release this miracle in the name of Jesus we we'll release this miracle you're here your third prayer point you came your third prayer point is that um, has to do with childbirth your third prayer point I think for your auntie or your sister your third prayer point who is that person your third prayer point exactly the third one the third one the third one your third prayer point for the Lord has an eye that sees he sees beyond hallelujah all of you your third prayer point hold on hold on don't just come out because we are going to pray for everyone all of you your third prayer point okay we're going to pray you will be shocked at what God will do for you hallelujah Selena is here she can testify of one of the women we prayed for some years ago and the woman has triplets right now all doing well in the name of the Lord Jesus in this miracle meeting we declare I sense the power of God strong upon seven years without a child. Who does that case? Seven years, exactly seven years. That's the, this is the prophetic year. Go and tell her. She will take in in three months from now and she will give birth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Madam, you're standing in for yourself, for somebody. Who is standing in? I, there's someone is standing for yourself. Yourself. Inside and out. There's somebody who should be standing for yourself. If you are pleased, if you are in the congregation, come. Inside and outside. You're standing for yourself. Are you married? Okay, come. Someone told you prophetically that you will not give birth to children. Ah. Well, the ministers will pray for you. Listen, listen. Whose report will you believe? Tonight we terminate everything. All of you here, please lift your hands. Let's hurry up. I decree right now, in the name of Jesus, for all the people you are standing for, we release miracle children right now. Miracle children in the name of Jesus and for some of them I command that fibroid to come out of the womb and let them be able to take in we decree it, we declare it receive it right now in the name of Jesus, God bless you, please go back quickly hallelujah now if you have any kind of heart condition heart condition please come out quickly, hole in your heart uh, abnormal heartbeat whatever it is, please come quickly inside and outside heart condition do we have people with that kind of situation any heart condition please come quickly heart condition we give you the, the highest we give you we give you we give you the highest. We give you, we give you heart condition. Now is the time for you to be healed. We give you, Lord. As we pray for you check yourself right away are you listening to me check yourself right away and begin to do the things that you couldn't do are you listening to me those with peptic ulcer get ready Hallelujah. we give you now 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. We heal now by the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of we the give you the highest praise. Heart condition, go. our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.